Living on a boat can be eye-opening. And I guess that's why people often ask us, what's the scariest situation we've ever been in? Holy crap! Let's go back. Well, up until now, well, nah, that's not coming out. It was dragging in Lady Musgrave. That rain is like... But after this episode, <gasps> we'll have a whole new story to tell. Can I do something? A steel catch with the most enormous bowsprit I've ever seen swings into our fiberglass boat during a freak storm in the middle of the night. This bowsprit can punch a hole in the boat. My gosh, we're touching. We feel like a balloon that's about to be popped by a 20 plus ton behemoth of a boat. Call it misjudgment, foolishness, our worst nightmare. Are we gonna move or it's here? This will be our scariest situation we've had on board. It's a rare and raw glimpse behind the scenes as John and I will fight to save everything we own. We arrive to the anchorage looking for an empty space with enough swing room to park up for a few days. Yep, ready. We're just south of the Great Barrier Reef off the largest sand island in the entire world and we're anchored off Kingfisher Bay Resort. At this point, it's not obvious to us that the spot we've chosen to anchor is going to cause us the most amount of grief we've experienced to date. Uh, that's about 12. In fact, at this point, this steel catch wasn't even in swing room to us. And our only distraction is the shallow depth, looming storms, and the burnt orange sunset. Wow, it is so beautiful tonight. Just anchoring here at uh, Fraser Island. Sun's just setting and a few storms around. It's such a magic spot. Oh my gosh. Are we okay? We got enough? Yeah. With the snubber in place secure, we settled into the night, turning off the engine and soaking up the serenity, our new surrounds. The next day, it was so eerie, we woke to fog. On a day like this, our solar panels struggle. So we have to be mindful of how much energy we use and draw from our batteries. We push the boom to the side so we can draw as much sunlight onto our largest panel that sits on our deck. Well, it's nice out here. Yeah, the beach has disappeared. We're gonna go for a little morning stroll, but it doesn't look like that's gonna happen. Taking advantage of the spring tide, that captain of the catch beached it. Sinking tide. But what we didn't realize is that on the turn of the tide, he re-anchored closer to us than before. We had no idea until John randomly woke up in the middle of the night, intuition, a gut feeling perhaps, just as an unforecasted storm was approaching. Are you joking me? 100%, there's only like a boat length between us. These guys have anchored about 30 meters from us. Oh man, I've met After anxiety. we went to bed, that was the boat that was on the beach. Oh yeah, that's right. It was at this point, John and I had a crucial decision to make. Oh, there's enough room for... Do we move and re-anchor or do we stay put? <gasps> oh gosh. We just quickly re-anchor out there or? Yeah, 100%. Do you think that we're gonna... Have time? Have time? Well, I think we should do it really quickly. I don't know, is this a disaster waiting to happen? <gasps> it might just be rain. Uh, I think we should go in and stay out here on the front of the boat. Okay. At this point, I'm going inside. I'm turning off and unplugging our electronics in case we're struck by lightning. We should whistle out to that dude and wake him up. Because the weather coming towards us, we brought all our like shoes and stuff inside, hung out, got our washing in. You know, we're aware of our surroundings. The pressure is really mounting now. Our swing room is compromised. The storm is inbound and the current is raging. John's yeah, steering look. the boat. Look at the current. Because we have current, he's steering the boat away from old mate. Oh, oh steer it towards him. No, no, no. Uh, let's just see how close we get if we were to swing. So it may not look like we're close right now, but... It's about 30 meters away. Yeah, definitely. And, whoa, that's not cool. 
if we were to leave right now, yeah, the best thing to do is just put it right in the middle and lock it. Yeah, well, to be fair, if we were to move it right now, we probably wouldn't be insured because there's a warning. I think we're not going to see much re anchoring. But the storm was closer than we thought. We decided to fit our lifelines with fenders. <gasps> Seconds later, everything became real. Our boats were swinging into each other and we were just meters from one another. I just saw John quickly go up the stairs and yell, oi, oi, like to try and get the other bloke's attention. What is he gonna do? Nothing, he's just gonna stay up. He said, are you dragging our mind? I said, I said, no, I don't think either of us can't have a jacket. Yeah. Like, no, I don't think either of us are. I said, I think you dropped your anchor a bit close. And he goes, he goes, yeah. Here. Do you need more fenders? All we can do is watch and wait. Can I do something? Oh my gosh, we're touching. In the chaos, I stopped filming, but this shot shows our fenders kept us clear. Just. Just like that, in an instant, our stern was up against his bow. Thank God we have the fenders out. Just get ready with the fenders on the other side. On the left? Yep. You know when you're at a marina and the fenders are completely squeezed during a storm? That's what it was like between us and old mate's boat. Like the fenders were squeezed so tightly and there were about four of them in the space of maybe like three meters because the fenders were like moving around as the boats were moving around like side by side if you can imagine the boats were like sort of like this up against each other and so the fenders were rolling out you know sometimes they do that i was like john please just be careful with your hands like it's just not worth it like I don't care what happens to the boat. You know, we're on a 13 ton boat. His boat is all steel. Like when you're in the heat of the moment, you're just worried about a huge bowsprit on old mate's boat going to the side of our fiberglass boats. Like you try and do anything to fend it off. But yeah, at the end of the day, I don't think it's worth losing a hand over. Rather than re-anchoring, the catcher's captain decided to just release more chain. John and I didn't feel safe, so in the darkness of the night and in the pouring rain, a full moon above, we lifted our anchor in a bid to seek refuge. I think it's a move. Really? It's a move. Well, anywhere away from him, his bowsprit can punch a hole in the boat. Yeah, I just don't want that to happen again. That was really awful. Just, let's just get up with the anchor up. Let's re anchor. Can you put the nav instruments on? Yep. And so we were off, navigating in the darkness, the wind, the rain. Anchor lights were glowing and we used a torch to look out for other boats. Thankfully, we were successful on our first anchoring attempt. Our nose is digging in. Okay, yeah. Looking around, I couldn't believe our luck. We're in really good position now. That was close though, there was oh. so much load on the boat. Oh. What was happening, we were getting pulled back by the current, his boat was getting pushed forward by the wind, and we were pinned against him, I and then what him. happened, the wind backed off, and we even swung around in front of him, and then he let more chain out to move further back, but I was like, we're moving. Yeah, that was pretty wild. I couldn't film it because it was so intense. I tried to get my phone out quickly, but it was raining. It was a bit awkward because, like, what are you gonna do? Put a camera on your head and start filming like you feel bad like the other bloke didn't want this to happen clearly good morning oh, it seems like bombs hit it i'm actually so tired i feel like my eyes have been stung by bees well, it's not my fault i got rudely woken up in the middle of the night so thanks to old buddy Good morning. Morning. New hat. New old hat. Yep, 
in the chaos, it fell in the drink. That was so messed up. I said, mate, you ain't too close. Oh, oh did you just lose your heart? Oh, no. Ask your question. Did you notice John's poor heart? John's heart? Yeah. What's going on with the John's, hat? John's a little upset about it. Oh, why? John? Oh, no, I just lost my hat. It just blew up last night. <gasps> Oh, your okay. favourite hat! And I got this shitty one. That's alright. Oh no! It's the backup hat. No, John was still talking about it this morning. It's still dirty on it. I know, and I was like, <laughs> mate, I'm like, if that's the one thing that happened last night is you lost your hat, like, everything's good. Everything's okay. And so we're not leaving Takana unattended here. While the boys man our position, us girls are going out to explore Australia's largest sand island. Oh! Don't miss it. I'll see you in the comments section to debrief. And why not join our crew? Know where we're off to next by joining us over on Patreon. We've really got something special brewing.